good evening. So um, this is Anna. It's time to talk about education again, very briefly. It's quite late here, but I've had a lot of inquiries about um, the exam command words work that I did. People have many questions to ask me. So I'm going to put it on a couple of platforms of mine, invite a few people to join. I prefer that people join me live on these sessions so you can ask me your questions and I can answer you so that um, once we're done with the broadcast, we're done. Trying to return a mock-up after the broadcast and answer all the queries is difficult, it really is. Everyone, yeah, bear with me. Hi. I'm trying to and yes, the iPad is noisy and yes, it's annoying, but bear with me. I'm going to put it on my platforms. I have about four or five of them to put on. And once I put it on those platforms, we'll be good to go. I want to keep this brief. I want it to be sweet and snappy. I want it to benefit those who are interested. And that's all I'm going to do at the moment. Share information to those who require it. If you are interested and you come across this one, please follow the page. I would like ideally over time to um, make it such that it's not necessary for me to have to share to so many places before people see it. It's early days, I do appreciate it. And because it's early days, I'm quite happy to do this. But I, I hope that uh, very soon it's no longer necessary to spend this time putting things out this way before the show starts. That's it. I think these are the only places that um, I can send it to for now. Good evening. Well, good almost midnight, my end. It's good to see you. I am still sharing. We're going to talk about um, exam technique. Somebody says, Amma, do you support teaching to exams? Yes, I do support teaching to exams because the reality of life is that children have exams to write. The reality of life is that decisions are made based on children's performance in exams. The reality of life is that you don't want to disadvantage your kids from ignorance. And for that reason, a child who is going to write an exam anyway better knows how to write the exam to get the best possible outcome from the exam so that they can move on with life. That is how life is set out at the moment. It would have been ideal if it was different it would have been ideal if we could just teach kids and leave them. No need to assess them in any way. Unfortunately, uh, that's not how it works. The way life works at the moment is that kids go to school, that kids are taught the curriculum, that somebody has to evaluate uh, the success of that. Hi, Saida. Hi, darling. It's good to see you. Hello, sis. Hi. Children go to school, children learn, children write exams, and so... It is a little myopic to say that we disagree with it and so we will not help kids. If you strongly disagree with it, then don't send your kids to school. Don't send them to the slaughterhouse. Don't leave them unattended in the name of not believing in exam. So yep, I believe in teaching to exam. I don't believe in teaching only what we think will turn up on the exam, but I do believe in adequately preparing kids for examination so they do not feel disadvantaged in the exam. Michael Laka, I see you. As for this brother of mine, trying to pin you down is nearly impossible, but I shall conquer this one too. Thank you for joining. It's good to see you. Sharing, done. Let's move on. So I showed you a document. This document is readily available online. This is the Edexcel version of it. This is for one exam board. AQA has its own version. OCR has its own version. Waffa Ben, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever the time happens to be your end. But these things are legally required to be made available, so they are actually available in the West. Ima, hi, 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 hi. I started talking about exam command words and people, um, I've got so much information about, Ama, can you explain that again? So I'm just going to write through them. We have exam command words, and the exam command words check different things. Some of those words check understanding. Some of those words check that you can explain. Some of them only check greetings from my village. I hope everybody is well in Ohio, Fabian. Hi, 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 hi. I hope 
that as we discuss these things, you understand the things that go into good evening, good evening in Dubai, good evening from Alain. I hope you are well. It's good to see you, sis. So I started explaining assessment objectives. I explained the various um, levels of understanding we test. I wanted people to know how your kids are tested. And one of the key things about the test is the exam command word. That one word is the difference between your child understanding a question effectively, being able to answer, hi, mommy, for a hi, 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 Jim. Wow, it's nice to catch you live. So my brother, Jim, you can throw in some punches as well if I miss anything. Those of you who are educators as well and can chip in, sister, brother, I see you. Good evening. Well, almost good midnight for my end, but there we go. Nanamufa, hello. Hello, everybody. Listen. In an exam, what the examiner wants is actually determined by the choice of word in the question. So questions may be things like state. State means simply tell me. You don't need to think about it. There is no other um, skill required except recall. Regurgitate what has been told to you and just tell me. State the law of conservation of momentum. There is no thinking about it. You simply tell me the law, the way your teacher taught you. And if you state it correctly, boom, one mark, two marks, max. It's a low order skill, very low order. State, give, name. You don't think about it. You just recollect. It's a recall question. That's all. That's, that's all that is required. Low end. Describe is a step on. You are not simply stating. You might state some things and put them in logical order. So you might describe what a person looks like. She's got kinky hair. She's got dark skin, blah, de blah. You are using facts, you know, but you might sequence these facts. You will put them in logical order in some cases. Describe how to do an experiment. You can't start eating before you cook. So you will put that description in sequence. You go to the market, you get the uh, ingredients, and then you come clean them. You cut them all, blah, blah, blah. You cook logical sequential order hello sister Theo. i saw your message but i was here already i will go listen and i will respond so holic hi you're welcome it's good to see you when you ask a child to describe you are saying what you can see so we can ask you to describe a graph at first it increased and then it stayed the same and then it declined and then increased you simply state what you see in order or we can ask you to describe a method, in which case you tell me what happens in that process, again, in sequence, logical order. No reasons, just describe. Simple. Tell me what it is, put it in the order, what does it look like, how does it happen, boom, 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 boom. We are describing. DJ Abufa, hello. You don't want to describe, but why the students in Ghana, the young girls, they won't allow them to grow their hair? I'm glad you brought that up. Listen. If you are in school, you spend your time studying. Fixing your hair should not be part of your problems. Yeah. We spend so much time in tertiary institutions fixing hair, fixing makeup, fixing a lot of other things except studying. And so I am one of those people who thinks that young girls at that age should be free of that pressure. When you cut your hair, and my hair was cut, when the time came for it to grow, it has grown. At that age, fixing of the kid's hair is not a priority styling of their hair not a priority i know some of you disagree you want them beautified for you and at that age i don't think beautification of kids is a priority my view we will discuss that on a separate one on the amaman same page because that's a specific niche discussion to have this one is a general one well for ernest Chum, i see you it's good to see you bro welcome so i am described I'm, I'm trying to explain how the questions are written out and what is required if a question asks you to name, to state, to give, and you write 20 pages of an explanation, is a waste of your time because the question has not asked you to explain anything. Tell me what it is and move on already. For most Western exams, it's one minute per mark. So if it's a one mark question, you should not spend more than one minute on it. One minute per mark on the average. So tell your kid not to spend five minutes answering a one mark question because it means that that child will not finish the paper. It means that that child is going to lose out on an opportunity to answer questions that they may know the answer to. Time management is one of the other skills in preparation for exams. A kid has to know how to time themselves adequately. They need to be on point with timing. 
otherwise things that they already know might not fetch the marks not because they've not learned it but because they've not learned how to manage time one mark per minute that's the guide when a question says describe again there is no need to give reasons because the examiner does not care about your reasons if an examiner wants reasons the command word will not be described when they ask you to describe you tell them exactly as it is in the logical order boom 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 done collect your marks move on if it's a six mark description of course you know you've got to raise six individual points you will have to describe six stages you will have to give six steps in the sequence of events whatever the marks also tell you how many points to raise describe the process of photosynthesis for six marks will not be the same as describe the process of photosynthesis for two marks what is photosynthesis does not mean you describe it tell me exactly what it is it is a process by which plants produce tell me what it is recall give two marks maximum the other type of questions we ask is the big one explain when somebody asks you to explain yourself what they're actually asking you to do is to give reasons why 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 that's the key word why most kids misunderstand these two key words they see and explain, they give you a story. They see and describe, they give you a story. We might find a mark or two to give a kid, but it's just an entertaining story, no marks. You need to tell your kid that when a question says explain, they have to give reasons why. I hate him because. And so teachers and people who prepare kids for exams might use strategies like peel, point, evidence explanation link i hate him that's the point i hate him because he annoys me that's just giving a reason i will have to expand on it yes for example this morning when he took my food he was very annoying and he does it every time so i hate him when you use peel or peeing over it, point evidence analysis, there are many different ways of doing these things, but you raise a point, you might quote numbers in evidence, and then you analyze things. Kids on the higher order will use the peeing strategy. Kids starting out will use the peeling strategy. Doesn't matter what strategy you use. The baseline of an explained question says, give me reasons why. Tell me why, or tell me why not. I dislike such a thing because this is a good technique because I do and the word because or so therefore those connectives will have to be there if you've written an effect a effective explanation tell your kids that the conjunctions make the big difference she's listening oh Nana Samoa Kofi is good to have you bring your kids because yes these channels they are there for you parents to draw your attention to things but it's actually intended for the kids the kids who will be writing the exams one mark per minute so tell your kid not to waste time on one question thank you sister brother bang on it's one mark per minute that's the western standard so if your child is spending 10 minutes answering a one mark question your kid does not understand how exams work no, I know you studied it for three hours, but the question simply says name. Name it, move on, get over it already. Yes, you've wasted your time studying it. It's only a two marker. There is no point wasting your time. Try to tell me all the other things you learned because the marks are not available for it. Simple. Anything you write beyond name is a waste of your time. Nah, nah. Hello, Ben. Good evening. You are welcome. So I am working on exam technique. Exam technique is a very important thing. Good evening, Wolfabek. It's very important for kids because a lot of kids spend time studying. They spend time trying to learn the material, but then they don't have any idea how to answer questions. They waste time unnecessarily on low end questions, and then they don't have enough time to answer the six markers. One mark per minute. That's the headline statement for you and your kids from me today. Miss Mark, you're welcome. When you explain, you give reasons why, 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 and until the kid has answered why, they've not answered the question. They might go around in circles, they might describe certain things, they might state certain things, until the reason why is given, they have not explained. Explain questions are all about why, why, why. Those are core questions. So you see a lot of descriptions, a lot of explanations on many question papers. 
Then we start distinguishing between the students, the ones who actually know what they're doing and the ones who are just floating in between. And those um, decider questions tend to use one of these keywords. Evaluate, evaluate. A lot of kids have no idea how to evaluate. So they will write things they know. Nanepia, hi. They will try and describe. They will try and do some explanation. Mm, they might get a mark. Sometimes they might not even pick anything because the command word says evaluate. And if you look under evaluate, there's almost a paragraph from the exam board about what is required for evaluate. And you would see I've underlined certain things. Let me read them to you. It says review information. One, example data and methods. Then bring it together. So you are not just superficially reading the information. You read the information, you bring it together to form a conclusion. That's the key word, conclusion. In order to form this conclusion, drawing on evidence, including strengths, weaknesses, alternative actions, relevant data or information. And this is how you strategize it. Pros, cons, opinion. Good not so good my thoughts and that's how we explain it to kids when you evaluate you have to look for good things strengths and then you also look for the not so good things and then you give me your opinion your final conclusion what have you actually discovered what have you decided looking at the pros and cons your opinion and two marks these tend to be six mark questions evaluate questions tend to be six marks two marks for the pros two marks for the cons two marks for the opinion and you will find a lot of kids who will give you six pros i don't care if you know 20 pros there is still only two marks available so if i give you two marks and you've given me 10 pros the other eight is a waste of it's a waste of your time really a lot of kids will do all the pros and forget to give you the cons the don'ts the not so goods those two marks are gone then a lot of kids actually know the pros and cons bit, but they forget that you need to draw a conclusion. That's the key thing about the evaluation. You need to have a conclusion. Having seen the positives and negatives, I still think we should try it because the positives are way the negatives. Or the negatives are way too many to justify the little positive we get. You have to give me a conclusion. That conclusion, your personal opinion, your decision, what you've learned from looking at the two things is also worth two marks good bad your opinion and if you teach your kid these things then your kid is likely to get full marks on things they know anyway if your kid doesn't know this simple strategy oof we have a problem with throwing marks out good 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 i'm glad kofi that she knows it's really nice to see kids who are switched on Mamiya Master says, you are so right. A broad marking scheme is totally different from the West. I'm telling you, everything is done differently. And the funny thing is for all these Western exam boards, because of the way things happen in the West, they've got to make a disclaimer. They actually put the document on their website. It's there. It's a legal requirement. They provide all these things for anybody who wants to access the information. The problem is we, don't, we are allergic to reading we will not go and access it. The kids will not know these things automatically. They are children. Even you don't know. So how do you expect your little kid to know? You will have to go information seeking. You will go to find information and give it to your kids at the appropriate time. Help them to rectify things that might be a weakness in their exam tech. And you don't need to pay somebody else to do it. You, 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 you. As I keep saying, at the lead consultant, the lead educational consultant in your kid's education, it's you who should lead it. It is you who should find it. And if it's really impossible for you to do it, then you get other people to come support you. You are still in the center of it. You are still involved. You don't pay other people to do it for you. You, ha you pay other people to help you to do it. That's the key thing. You should be doing it if you can do it by yourself. And if you can't do it, you get support from other people to help you lead your kid down the straight and narrow. Very important to me. Mami, thank you for sharing. I am so grateful. God bless you. The other key word there, which is also worth looking at, is the one most kids find difficult. Discuss. 
For many children, discuss means tell me a story. No, discuss does not mean tell me a story. It doesn't mean go on and on and on and on about one thing. It does not. Discuss means identify an issue or situation, a problem, an argument, and which is being assessed in the question. Identify an issue. Pick up your point. Na -na -na -na. Hi, hi, welcome. The second thing after you've identified the problem is to explore all aspects of this issue. All aspects. Positive aspects, negative aspects, not so positive, somewhere in the middle. We can decide all aspects of this issue. That's the second mark. And investigate by reasoning or argument. Investigate. So these are the key three keywords. There are three command words hidden inside the word discuss and children find it so difficult as a, re a result. When we ask you to discuss, we are actually giving you three command words. The first one is identify. The second one is explore. And the third one is investigate. And you've got to do all those things in your discussion. No mercy, you are on time. We've only been going for five minutes, I think. I don't think it's been that long. So in the discuss command word, hidden in there is three exam command words. Identify, explore, and investigate. Does your kid know this? Can your kid do these three things? Because each of these three things is worth two marks. A lot of children will see a discuss question and they are off telling you a story. No, it is not a storytelling session. No, it is not download everything you have learned. No, it is not repeat every nonsense you've heard about the topic. It is asking you to identify a problem, an issue, to discuss something. You need to know what it is you are discussing. You need to explore all aspects. It has to be a balanced argument. And then you investigate. Mami Bnewa, hi. Sister Joyce, good evening. It's good to see you. Estimates. That's a simple one. Give us a guess, but it's an educated guess. Don't just pull a random number. Look at what's been given to you and estimate. Give us a sensible guess. That's an estimate. Comment on is another one children find difficult. Comments. No, it is not Facebook comments. It is not stupid statements. Comment on also requires the synthesis of a number of variables from data and information and the key thing is to form a judgment so comment on is very similar to justify comment on is quite similar to justify but a lot of kids don't think they don't realize this the minute they see comment on because we make loose comments on facebook on social media we comment on anything the way we want commenting on in an exam is completely different from social commentary to comment on something, obtain, it says, requires the synthesis, means the processing of a number of variables from data or information to form a judgment. You need to have that judgment there if you've made a sensible comment, really. Compare. It says, looking for similarities or differences of two or more things similarities or differences it should not require drawing a conclusion so when we ask you to compare no need to write a conclusion listen the answer must relate to both or all things mentioned in the question compare is completely different from comment on completely different from and the other one which is annoying that i wanted to race today is determine and this is what the exam boards command words appendix five i'm actually reading from an official document this is available this is a pearson one so you can get it from the edexcel um website determine it says the answer must have an element which is quantitative so you have to have a number aspect to the answer from the stimulus provided so you can't just quote what they give you you have to calculate something you need to work something out 
So if it started from two to six, it has changed by four. You can't tell me it started from two and it ended at six. That is simply repeating what has been given to you. But finding the difference between two and six and telling me that it's increased by four, that is what we are looking for. It says the answer must have an element which is quantitative from the stimulus provided or must show how the answer can be reached quantitatively. Quantitative means numbers. To gain maximum marks, there must be a quantitative element to the answer. Quantitative has been repeated three times in this directive. Your kid cannot determine if they've not written a number. They cannot determine if they've not written a number. And that number cannot be repeated from what was given in the exam. You've got to work things out. It has increased by, it has decreased by, it has changed by. You will have to work with the stimulus material to calculate something. Determine a quantitative change. And the word quantitative repeated three times in this guidance. Describe. It says to give an account of something. Statements in the response need to be developed as they often linked, but do not need to include a reason or justification. We don't need reasons when we ask you to describe. We want reasons when we ask you to explain. Can you please, in goodness name, find these command words for the very exam your kids about, are about to write? Can you help the kids work through these? Make sure your kids decipher this. Make sure your kids understand this. No, Mercy, it's not just for kids. It's for anybody who is studying, really. For anybody who is writing, really. But for me on this channel, my emphasis is on the exam kids this year. And that's why you hear me referencing those. But it's beneficial to all manner of people. So she says, this teaching is not only for children alone. Even me as an adult is very beneficial to you. As sometimes questions will be discussed and you get comments like, I am describing, yeah, instead of discussing yes describing and discussing are not the same justifying and explaining are not the same commenting on and naming are not the same even suggest is something completely different you've got to know so a suggest says use your knowledge not something you've repeated from the question use your knowledge to propose a solution to a problem in a novel context Suggest means you are applying to a scenario you are not familiar with, but you are using drawing on your knowledge, applying it to a new context to give a possible solution. That is how to suggest. Justify is to give evidence to support. Justify something. Give evidence in support. Either the statement given in the question or an idea being interrogated. It's that simple. Justification is all about evidence. It's completely different from discussion. You might cite some evidence in discussions, but the emphasis is not evidence statements. In justification, it is all about evidence statements. Why am I discussing command words? You cannot answer any exam if you don't understand command words. You could have studied the material, you could have understood everything, but you will lose marks because you don't understand the command word and because you don't know how to address it. So I always say to people, a kid who gets a B grade and a kid who gets an A star grade, they have the same understanding, very similar understanding. The key difference is that the kid who is an A star reads the question, understands exactly what the question is, is effective in meeting what the question wants and can transfer their knowledge into full marks. Knowledge, full marks. Highly efficient in mark acquisition. Doesn't necessarily mean he understands more than the B-grade kid. The B-grade still understands, doesn't read the question, doesn't decipher well, mm, attempts to get it, may get some of the marks, three quarters of the marks, half of the marks here, drops some unnecessarily. Doesn't mean this kid doesn't understand. It just means this kid has no idea how to effectively collect marks for what they already know. What's the point in knowing if you can't collect marks? What's the point in wasting time to revise only to throw marks out in the exam? What is the point? What is the point in learning if you can't demonstrate it at the critical point? 
and that's why i am hoping to discuss this this platform is great, but it's great to learn you know what breaks my heart though elsie it's good to see you elsie i know your kids are exam kids they are around my kids age get them on the page please get them to sign up if your kids are not on facebook not a problem let them watch on your account and let them learn from me i want the kids to hear how to strategize and convert what they know efficiently in marks i am tired of very knowledgeable uh, ghanaian kids pulling a b pulling a c not necessarily because they've not revised and the kids are devastated they are heartbroken they've worked so hard but they can't see anything in return from the exam and it's not because they don't understand usually it is weaknesses in exam technique do you parents know that exam technique has to be taught overtly as we teach the content do you know that your kid does need to know the differences between these command words that your kid needs to see practical examples of how to answer them and that's why past paper questions became popular you read the question you answer it and then you check on the mark scheme and you will see exactly what was rewarded and what wasn't rewarded you learn about it and you move on but even that is not adequate if you've not seen what the command word requires it is much better for you to know what the command word requires exactly how we expect answers to be written so that a good candidate would tailor their answers to suit what is being what is being sought what we are looking for is what the kids need to get and that's why i switch on the cameras to have these conversations parents let's get in touch with abrewa to tutor your kids if parents would want a tutor that's fine i do tutor those of you who are looking to uh, contract me for december best thing to do is to reach out to me today or tomorrow because i charge monthly at the moment so it's better that on the first of the month if you're going to secure my services you do so you pay me in advance because it's the only way i get Ghanaians to make sure your kids attend my classes when i made it the flexible payment on a weekly basis or on a lesson by lesson basis i get excuses we are going to a funeral my grandfather plans to die in three days we yeah i got tired of it and decided i was going to go monthly and since i decided to do it that way the kids i tutor do not miss lessons if they have to miss lessons they will reschedule with me way in advance so it's monthly payments payments made uh, first of the month so you want me to teach your kid in December, you contact me today or you contact me tomorrow at the very latest. Please be prepared that you are going to pay me for the whole month. And then you are going to make sure your kid attends my classes so that the money you've paid for actually benefits you and your kid. It is not lip service tutoring. I actually do need to see the student to be able to teach them. All right, Nanekuya, you are welcome. Good evening, Aminipa. Good evening, Sister Mavis. Welcome, welcome, everybody. You are watching with your children. God bless you, Mercy. I am so grateful to people like you who create opportunities like that for the kids to access information that could be life transformational. It is really important to me that the kids who are writing exams get to hear me. The kids don't know my name. The kids will not find me. Well, the kids should not even be on social media, depending on the age. So you don't leave it for kids to find me accidentally. You just show them. And if you don't want them to watch on Facebook, you can download it and give it to your kids on WhatsApp or wherever. You can send them the links to look at the lesson, at the discussion, and to learn from them. When I teach kids, I actually do teach exam tech. I actually teach exam tech to teachers. I teach teachers how to teach kids to, t uh, to be able to address exam tech. So it's something I'm passionate about. It's something I know transforms grades and transforms outcomes. And that's the reason why you will hear me discuss it and talk about it regularly this exam season until the kids write the exam. It was in response to a video I had yesterday. I exam command words they didn't really develop it much because it just came up in a discussion. I had a few people request if I would actually dedicate some time on the command words themselves and that's why i am having today's session Anybody who teaches and educates will tell you that i haven't told you a word of a lie and actually the material i am referencing appendix five on the edexcel gcse suite is different from the a level suite please go find it the other exam boards also have their own publications of it download it make sure that you are familiar how can you play a game when you don't know the rules
the maker of the game has made the instructions for you you completely ignore the rules and decide to play it's the epitome of madness and that's what we are asking our kids to do write examinations that they don't understand assessment criteria for asking the kids to answer questions when they don't even know what the command words require it's just asking kids to waste time acquiring knowledge and be ineffective in exhibiting that knowledge in an exam and i do not want that i am so grateful to those of you who stay and you watch these broadcasts especially to those of you who share the broadcast you don't know who needs to hear the information so i am begging you begging you sister joyce maybe maybe in december just mm, we finish here on the 12th or 14th we finish on the 12th so I might come just before the 20th. I need to come for a review in uni. So yeah, that week after the 12th or 14th, thereabouts, I will be in England, God willing. Please have your codes and everything bought for me. Meet me at the airport because I will be freezing. This kid has not been in the cold for quite a while. So I am dreading coming in December, but there you go. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Please share the video for me. Tell us especially if you happen to be in parent groups somebody um drew my attention about addressing mothers i tend to address mothers because the reality of our community is that education is relegated to mothers but i do see kofi and a few fathers here who are interested kofi mentioned putting his daughter on to listen and i am in awe of men like that and because i know it's predominantly women sometimes you have me I'll be watching while some of the white tutors not with tutoring agencies demand payment in advance so i second your initiative towards upfront payments yes upfront payment is the only way to get commitment from us once we've paid we will make sure that the kids attend and that's what i'm after i want your kids to attend i don't just want your money i want your kids to attend what i charge you for these lessons is ridiculous but i want your kids to be able to benefit from my knowledge and from my skills as a teacher it's the only way I can reach my community because a lot of your kids don't end up in my class. My profession was actually because my career was becoming useless to my community. It was highlighted by a friend of mine a few years ago, broke my heart, but was the truth and nothing but the truth. The people in my community don't tend to meet me in classrooms. Your kids don't tend to experience me. Offering tutoring online is probably the only way many of you would benefit from my expertise. And that's why I have offered the service and I've pegged it at the ridiculous price I charge. My standard price for an hour for the kids I teach here ranges between 50 and 100 pounds an hour. 50 and up to 100 pounds an hour with some kids. Just so I can sit down with them and explain what I'm explaining for free on this broadcast. Just so I can sit and I can work with a kid sometimes for three weeks on exam command words. 100 quid an hour certain people pay me but i'm putting it out here for free because you are my people you are my own you might not have heard it elsewhere you might not be in a position to pay 100 quid an hour and if you have a sister who can tell you why should you pay 100 quid an hour and that's why i am doing this so you parents will hear it from me and once you know you will transfer it to your kids you will guide your kids you will do the best you possibly can for the kids and if you find that there's a gap you will seek support but still realize from ama it is you who needs to lead your kids education you may seek support to help you lead your kids education you are the lead consultant don't forget that you are the key practitioner don't forget that. don't relegate that to anybody and don't think that you can pay other people to do it as well as you can do because none of us cares as much as you do. None of us is as heavily invested as you are. None of us is going to benefit from the kid and the pride you get from seeing a kid through the way you would. So you are the person who cares the most. You are the person who should lead this process. Maddie, thank you so much for joining. And thank you all so much for staying. It's quite late here. I was just going to do this for 10 minutes. I think I've halved on a bit longer than 10 minutes. I don't intend to waste your time, so I will keep it short. I'll keep it snappy. But I am so grateful. Sister Lucy, I do see you. Sister Joyce, I see you too. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying. And Equia, I see you also there, right there. Thank you so much. 
for staying, for sharing, for telling other people about it. Thank you for being amazing parents, hands-on parents, parents who are interested in the progress of your kids. For that, may the good Lord bless you. Thank you and good night.